Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, on what will be the last parliamentary day here in the 46th Parliament, if we've learned anything over these past three years, it's that disasters can strike at any time. When I first came to this place, farmers and businesses and workers supporting farmers were in dire trouble because of drought. Then in late December 2019, the Kurrawan bushfires began and over many months raged and tormented 80% of my electorate. It's often called the Black Summer bushfires, but it's really the eerie orange dark skies, the ash rain, continual smoke, rotting food, um, no communications, and all of that that most people remember. The tragic loss of lives, families that will never ever be the same. Community members and volunteers left to pick up the pieces. Neighbours looking after neighbours, shop owners looking after customers, local emergency committees and emergency services volunteers and workers giving their all to help people. But Deputy Speaker, what tormented people even more was not being able to get the help they desperately needed. People were tired and they still are. And when you've lost all your business for weeks on end and told that you don't qualify for federal government support, what a slap in the face. When your home has burnt down and you need to rebuild and put in, in an underground water tank, but told by the government, even the Morrison government minister, that you don't qualify for home builder, well, that's a slap in the face too. When you're a farmer and you've lost equipment and stock and told that you don't qualify because of off-farm income. But again, the government doesn't get it because the drought meant more off-farm income was needed. There are many stories like this, all with the same theme, where people have been left behind by the Morrison government. Now, it's not for want of trying or me writing to various ministers. They just didn't listen or didn't care. Nine disaster declared floods in my region. People, businesses, roads and infrastructure have taken a battering. Ask anyone driving on our thousands of kilometres of insanely potholed crater roads what they think. They will be quick to tell the government. Landslides across Gilmore, closing roads and cutting off communities for weeks on end. I've spoken previously here about the Araluan Road and the devastation this has caused. And more recently, Kangaroo Valley, where this beautiful tight-knit community was completely isolated by road. And even when the road was able to be open, it was only by escort and at certain times. Supplies were choppered in for this community. But again, business owners, despite being severely impacted, tell me about how they have been told they don't qualify for even a basic federal payment. Again, I have raised this issue and will continue to do so. Deputy Speaker, there's a constant theme here. Where disaster impacted people have been left behind by the Morrison government. Disaster mitigation, along with my communities, is something I have been vigorously pursuing. One, our many one road in, one road out communities need greater assurances and protection for the next disasters. That means a more secure power supply and communications so that emergency information can be re relayed, so people can keep in touch with loved ones and better safer places of last resort. But again, calls for fireproof power poles for some communities and for the Mount Wanderer transmission station have fallen on deaf ears by the tone deaf Morrison government. We know that the Morrison government has an emergency response fund that it has not spent on disaster mitigation. It could easily choose to put in fireproof power poles, embark on an ambitious plan to improve drainage and roads to assist local government. But again, it does nothing. And then in the budget on Tuesday night, the government finally says it will spend some of the emergency response fund on mitigation. But guess what? It's completely left out my bushfire and flood impacted communities. Could there be a greater insult to my disaster impacted communities and people? Deputy Speaker, there are no words for this incompetent government, but perhaps Senator Ferrandry well said it best, Morrison is not fit to be Prime Minister. It is time for the Morrison government to go.